What's going on YouTube? It's me, First Review, back in here for another video. So last video I said I want to get Indian food, so this time I went and got it, yes. Um, here's a naan, and here is the food itself, kofta dinner. Oh yeah, look at that. Looks pretty good, honestly. Pretty big meal here. Didn't cost too much, it cost me like, well, I mean, it cost me like $16, $15, which is quite a bit, but like, I spent more money on food. So before we get into this, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below if anything you want me to try, anything you want me to talk about, I'm down to do it. Timestamps in the description. Okay, let's get into this. Oh, that tastes so good. The meat's nice and tender. Woo. The rice is cooked well too. So this is from a place called Bamiyan Kebab. From what I know, this is a really popular place. So any person I talk to who's Indian, from here knows what bamiyan kebab is and they all like it so there's one near me relatively near me and i decided to stop by on the way home from work and give it a try and man it was good Let me try with the naan. Some people will call it naan bread. I'm almost certain that's not what you call it because naan just means bread. So when they say naan bread, they're saying bread bread. Like chai tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, that tastes good. Man, I'm glad I got this. This is actually so good. I definitely had this before. Not from here. And also when I was younger. I don't really eat too much Indian food anymore. I'm not Indian, but... You know, growing up and stuff. Being West Indian. Uh, the foods really, like, merge and collide. So, I've been eating a lot of foods like this. This is good though. So, in this video, I want to talk about my favorite movies. Or, I guess you call it my top five movies. Now, these top five movies aren't in any particular order. Just because I don't want to go through the mental stress of deciding which one's above what. But these are my definitive, like, five favorite movies. Or, like, because some of them are tied for fifth. But these are some movies that if someone were to ask me, well, hey... Recommend a movie to me. What's your favorite movie? I give one of these movies. So first. Is Parasite. By Bong Joon Ho. I think is his name. Yeah. Came out 2019. Which, by the way, is one of the best years for movies ever. Um, we'll talk about it in a different video, but... Yeah. By Bong Joon-ho, basically. It's about... This poor family. Uh, conning their way into a rich family's uh, household. And kind of... Uh, well, the son, like, tutors and things like that. And I forget what... 
the sister does. The sister pretends to be like an art teacher or something along those lines. But it's just a movie that like shows their family and shows the opposing families and how they both live life differently and how they see things and like how class affects both uh, sides and how they see each other based on their like social status or their economic status. Really good movie, really in-depth movie. Has a lot of layers to it. Acting's good, music's good, everything's so perfect about it. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you only have that in your favorites because you haven't seen a lot of foreign films. And you know what? You're right. Aside for aside from like Bollywood movies, I haven't seen many like top tier movies that are in a different language that are foreign. But from this one I've seen, it beats out most of the non foreign movies I've seen. So. Number one, Parasite. Check it out. Two is a movie that flew under a lot of people's radars. However, this movie is called Honey Boy. I don't know who it's directed by. I forget who it's directed by. It's by a lady. And this movie is basically, it's Shia LaBeouf's movie. He created this movie or he wrote the movie. And it's about his life, right? It's kind of like a representation of his life when he was on Even Stevens as a kid. And like growing up in like in Hollywood in the limelight and his relationship with his father his strained relationship with his father and i thought that movie was so good because the acting was so good the story was so good and like a lot of parts of it were relatable and it was like artsy but not like too artsy where you're like what is this but it's like so well made and it touches so many notes and it hits like emotion it hits like seriousness there's like a part where he comes together with his father because we all know shia labeouf has been on like some like stuff even like ram after his transformers days he wasn't really i don't know how to explain him but you know he was like kind of out there and this movie kind of shows him coming full circle in a really nice way and i really enjoyed it Honey Boy is the first movie that actually made me cry. It was so touching and so powerful. Such a good movie. Next on the list, we have Get Out. Jordan Peele's debut. I remember seeing the trailer for Get Out a year beforehand. And I was like, I want to see this. And every time I show people, they'd be like, what the hell is this? This movie was so good. I feel like I don't even have to explain Get Out because Get Out was so big. It was like... It had such a huge impact on cinema when it came out because it was so groundbreaking in terms of like, oh, it's a horror, but it's not really a horror. It has a lot of Easter eggs in it. It talks about a lot of things. It talks about like class, same thing, and racism. So many good things in it. Everything about it is such a good movie. I don't really know anything that's wrong with it. I couldn't tell you anything that's wrong with the movie, right? And one common thing about this mo these movies that I'm saying, aside from Honey Boy, all these movies... You watch it once, you watch it twice. Every time you watch it or you see something about it later on, there's always new things to learn about the movie. For example, in Parasite, there's a lot of frames in the movie where there's like a line in between like the poor people and the rich people, right? There's just like a line in between them. And sometimes they will like cross that line. It's like literally a visible line in the, in the movie. And anytime someone crosses that line, that's like a metaphor for them like crossing the line, for like crossing boundaries. But it's like shown through such a subtle way and i didn't notice that until i seen a video about it i was like wow incredible so get out next one is interstellar i love interstellar i know some people aren't fans of the ending of interstellar because it takes a very science fiction approach at the end of the movie which i can kind of understand but not really because i still like the end of it because most of the movie was uh was based in like theory right a lot of it was like time dilation just like to the extreme like for example when they're on miller's planet i think is what's called like the time dilation that was helping happening there 
in theory is a real thing but to that extreme isn't a real thing unless you're like really really close to that black hole right the movie was like i think 90 set 90 percent theoretically accurate or scientifically accurate from like the time dilation from like traveling through space and just like so many things a lot of people don't like the end of it because at the end of the movie spoiler obviously he goes into a black hole and the black hole is a tesseract was like a fifth dimensional like object where he's able to see time as i guess like all together so the way we know time is like there's a past present future but in the tesseract there is no pa concept of past present future he can kind of like go through like a bookshelf and he's seeing uh past present future all at the same time and for a movie i feel like they showed that concept in a pretty interesting way in a pretty like good way because a lot of people when you explain that they're gonna be like how do you see past present future in one way and this is kind of like a visual representation of it and i thought it was pretty cool and it like ties up the movie together at the end where it's like he is the anomaly uh he's the one who like goes back in time and like sees his uh or goes back into the future or whatever happens and sees his uh daughter Also, the music, incredible. Hans Zimmerman, I think, is what, who did it. Incredible. And also, the thing I like about Christopher Nolan is he doesn't really like to use CGI too much. He's way more into practical effects, which end up coming out really good. Because I believe the black hole wasn't CGI. I think it was like a, a rendering or something. I don't know exactly what it was, but I don't think it's CGI. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong, but looks stupendous love that movie now in fifth place i have two movies technically there's a lot of movies but two movies i mentioned the first inception love inception i loved it when i was a when i was a kid when it came out when i was younger when it came out seen the movie in the theater like two times i bought it on xbox and watched it a bunch of times too i just love the concept of a uh, dream within a dream and like doing anything like that it's just such a good movie like conceptually i think the movie's really good and i love it Wait, is it as good as the other movies in terms of like story and like pacing and acting probably not which is why it's like tied with another movie and i didn't want to put christopher nolan in twice so i thought of another movie and the other movie is old boy by Park Chan Wook. He had a movie that just came out called Decision to Leave, which is a really good movie. I think I, I reviewed it, or at least I talked about it. I don't even want to like explain anything about this movie because it is such a good movie. It has such a huge twist. Basically, this guy goes to jail for a long time. He comes out and tries to figure out who put him in jail. That's all I'm gonna say about the movie because the movie has such a big twist at the end. I don't know what the hell I thought it was, but it wasn't what I thought what it was. So I mean, it was a good movie. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I loved. I love explaining it to people because every time I explain it to people, people are like, wow, that's a crazy movie. The only thing about Old Boys, I had to download the movie because I could not find it anywhere. It's a hard movie to find. So those are my five favorite movies, or six. Some of them, though. I feel like some of these can, like, get moved out here and there, but I don't know. Sometimes I'll see movies and I'll be like, this is really good, like... Also, Memories of Murder by Bong Joon-ho. It's, like, his uh, murder mystery uh, movie based off of these killings that were happening in in Korea a long time ago, like, in the 90s or 80s, something like that. Also a very good movie, but I think I prefer, like, Old Boy over it, to be quite honest with you, because Old Boy was just, like, I was like, whoa. I seen I'm like what is this and in terms of like other movies like Marvel movies there are some Marvel movies I really like too for example um, oh, my favorite Marvel movies are not MCU movies so First one is Deadpool. Deadpool's really good. I love Deadpool. I think it's really funny. I think the CGI is good. And I say this all the time. Making movies rated R always makes them better. 
there's really a time where a movie would be better for 14a than it would be rated r right and deadpool is a good example of that because there's like so much blood so many things they could do in the movie and explore that they can't like 14a or uh whatever pg-13 right so but deadpool's my second my first is logan logan is such a good movie it's so sad and emotional the fighting is good and it makes you feel for the character because you gotta remember this is a character like wolverine hugh jackman this is a character that we like grew up watching right from all the x-men from origin all the bad movies all the good movies we grew up watching him and then it was like the end of his character which is absolutely insane right and it's just so sad especially when like the copy of logan kills professor x and he's just like like shocked and then when logan gets him he's like it wasn't me it wasn't me it's such, such a sad movie such a good movie it was so good that I didn't even rem- I didn't even realize, or I completely forgot rather that it's a superhero movie. It's just it's like transcends it. It's just a movie about a guy with metal claws and a girl with metal claws, and they some of them have some powers. Like, the movie's so good, man. I want to watch it again in theaters for the first time. Anyways, that was Bombing on Kebab. Really good. Definitely check it out. Probably like an eight and a half out of ten. Because I feel like I could probably find somewhere better. But that was really good. I'd definitely go back there again. If I'm like ever passing by again. Or if I'm just feeling like for like Indian food. I'll definitely go back there again. Um, there's some white chocolate I got. Because I really love white chocolate. Not too sweet. And it tastes pretty good. Thank you for watching. Remember to check out any of the movies that I suggested uh, in this video. Just remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below of anything you want me to talk about. Any uh, topics you want to talk about. Any uh, food you want me to try. I'm down to try it. Check out the suggested videos on the side. Get yourself some white chocolate. Follow me on Instagram. And this is First Year Review. Peace.